Yes, sir. Governor, um, this may be for you and Dr. Gabriel. Um, we have a copy of an agreement between LDH sent to various offices of emergency preparedness, preparedness on the parish level, um, telling them they cannot release disclosed um, COVID uh, data, and when they get a new report, they have to erase the old ones, uh, destroy it. Can you kind of talk about what's behind that, and if all parishes are getting it? We're hearing some parishes have started receiving. Yeah, I'm going to ask Dr. Guidry to come up because he may know more about that than I do. I can tell you that one of the reasons you don't release, release information is because I believe we're identifying individuals uh, who have this disease and they have a right under HIPAA not to have that information out in public. Uh, and so that, that's why we're precluding, uh, we want the offices of emergency preparedness to have it so they know what's going on within their parish and particularly if they have to come into contact with those individuals, they know how to protect themselves or their first responders and, and so forth. Uh, so that's the purpose for sharing the information uh, and the reason why it can't be shared more broadly beyond that is, is, is a function of HIPAA. Is that correct? You, you want to add to that or does that do it? Well, come, come on up here and do that. Uh, personal health information, when you're sharing it, you have to uh, strike balance, but who needs to know? Who are you protecting? You need to protect the individual's personal health information. That's what HIPAA does. It tells you you have to protect their, their uh, identification. So early on in this, we did something very different than we normally do. Normally, we don't share any information with local government when it comes to health care information. We shared some so that they knew in their community with COVID and if their first responders responded, they knew. Now with as much COVID as we have, it make way more sense that rather than trying to find out who has it, when they had it, are they still infectious? You can't answer all these questions. So if you have a list of names, you don't know if they're over it. You don't know when they started with it. And so you're making decisions about treating them differently because they've had COVID. And that's not appropriate if, if they no longer have it. And it's not appropriate to share that with everyone because people will treat you differently. So we have tried to share to protect others without giving information that those folks would be uh, treated differently or, or you know, their, their health information wouldn't be protected. The problem that we've had is when we did share and we tell people this is HIPAA information, you're not to share with everyone they have not always followed our guidance. They have shared and they, put, and they put information out and that changes the way people react to you at your home, in your community. That's not what is intended. It was intended so that the first responders would know how to take protection. From the very beginning, we've always said and will continue to say, if you don't know if someone has COVID, wear your mask, keep your distance, treat everyone like they have COVID. Don't start picking on those that make a list. That list changes every day. And that list isn't current always because it might have been they tested two weeks ago and they just made the list because the test results just came back and they're no longer infectious. So it's misinterpreted, it's shared inappropriately, and so it's dangerous when you start sharing information and it's not used for the purpose intended. But we have to protect individual health information. To be clear, Dr. Gidry, this is the, these are the list of like Red River Well, you, you have where folks say we have information that doesn't match up with yours. And so when you think about this past month, there's over 500,000 test results. And you have folks at the local level, they're getting results from people reporting. They're getting results from different resources. We're getting all our results from lab reports. They're getting results from their local hospital or their, their local medical provider. And they're saying it's not matching up. Well, if it's not matching up, it's because there's different data sets and coming from different resources. When you look at over half a million tests, sometimes on those tests, people have taken multiple tests and their name is spelled differently on the test. They went to different labs, they went to different places. And so we do a lot of work in deduplicating, trying to make sure that you don't have tests and positive five times that that's a number. At the local level, at the government level, they think the numbers don't match up, 
but I, I'll stand by our numbers and their numbers are as best as they can get. But at some point, it doesn't help you to know the numbers from the standpoint of knowing who they are because of the fact that it changes every day, it changes every couple of weeks, and it's hard to stay ahead of it. So the best thing to do with this disease, instead of trying to see does your number match my number, is deal with disease. Wear the mask, wash your hands, keep your distance. Uh, so it has been around the not matching of information. But I'll tell you, our information comes from laboratory tests and reporting from medical providers, and it's a lot of work to figure out that deduplication and that it's accurate. And it may not match up with what local people have, and it, they don't feel comfortable, but they need to act like this disease is in the community. It's so not going to change the way you behave. It just is, this thing spreads when you don't take it seriously. When we started looking at that, and, and the question is, did we look at having a medical monitoring station at some hospitals around the state to address the uh, overflow? When we started looking at that, there was interest, and several of the interested parties came back and said they're having staffing issues and might not be able to fulfill those. So we have two or three that are still expressing an interest, and we're keeping that as, a, as a, something we might use the need arises. But at this point in time, we're still looking at where is it, let's get this disease under control. Uh, but we do have it as a contingency if need be that we could find some extra beds, but staffing those beds is, is a real issue around. Yeah, the, the questions about the, the data and the test beginning and LDH really didn't need to be instructed in this way uh, to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to have the most up-to-date reliable data and then to be as transparent as we can be with how we share that uh, and they go through great links uh, with an automated system and a manual system to go into those test results and make sure that we are not counting uh, more than one test uh, of the, for the same individual as being more than one case. Uh, and, and while I will never say that we're perfect, I will tell you that, that our data is very reliable. With respect to the medical monitoring station, Sam, I, I would remind everybody the, the principal medical monitoring station we have is at the 